Good afternoon, everybody. We're really glad to be here. I'm obviously Hazel Kimelich. I've just been introduced. Joe Berman is standing there, and Joe and I serve as co-presidents of the Anne Frank House. And George Saletti is uh, one of our residents. He's been with us almost seven years, George, right? Almost. Right. Okay. I'm going to do a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation about our program. Uh, that will probably be a review for some of you of some of the main um, main aspects of the program, and then we're going to leave some time for George to talk to you about his own experiences, which I think you will probably find very interesting, and then we'll leave some time for questions, and all three of us will be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, as Jill just said, our program it very specifically provides permanent housing as well as case management, social service support to uh, men and women who are at risk of homelessness, who have been homeless, and who suffer from chronic mental illness. We address two main issues, homelessness, obviously, and uh, chronic mental illness, both of which, as you well know, are really serious problems in our society. Our target population uh, consists of single adults uh, who have a history of uh, chronic mental illness and are unable to work. Uh, but they are able to live independently uh, with supervision and case management. And supervision is used kind of loosely. In general, it really means just a visit a week, either by phone or in person, to the case management provider. And some of our people go less, some go more often. It really is a question of how much, the, how much of a need there is. <coughs> We have two uh, overarching goals. One is, of course, totally consistent with what we've been talking about. We provide permanent housing. And, and I emphasize permanent. I said George has been with us for almost seven years. We have a couple of folks who have been with us for more than 10 years. And our, this is not a transitional program. This is giving people a home for as long as they need it. Sometimes people move on, but basically our goal is to provide housing on a permanent basis and to provide the kind of case management support that they need to be able to stay in that home. That's psychiatric support, that's just sort of logistical support if there's some particular day-to-day -day problems, it's medical support. So we uh, provide that through an organization that I'll talk about in just a minute. Um, our other goal, which is sort of our programmatic overall goal, is we'd like to increase the number of units we have by one or two a year. We're a small organization, and we want to grow, but we're going to grow incrementally. Uh, let me give you a little bit of history about Anne Frank House, and then I think you'll understand what I mean about this incremental growth. Anne Frank House started over 20 years ago in 1987. At that time, homelessness was becoming a really big problem because um, funding for uh, mental institutions was cut by the then administration, and a lot of people were left on the streets. It was really a very serious time. Uh, there was a minister downtown who worked um, at the End Street um, Church. It's, there's now End Street Village there. There are a lot of facilities there for homeless people. But this Reverend Steinbrook, who was the leader of that church at that time, kind of challenged synagogues and other churches in the area to do something about homelessness. And a lot of congregations responded, each in a different way, finding a specific niche. So it was at that time that some people from Addis Israel said, well, let's start a group home for women who are mentally ill. And for a long time, that's what we did. We had a house that um, housed four women, and there was a supervisor in the house, sort of a manager. And that worked for quite a while, and then eventually some of the women left and some passed away, and it became increasingly difficult to find the right people to live in a group situation. And this is not always a very easy population. So the group home kind of shrunk to two people, and then we decided we needed to grow. So in 1996, when you could actually buy a studio apartment in Northwest Washington for 40 or 50 or maybe $60,000, we started buying apartments. Uh, we were able to get loans from different organizations and grants, and we were able to get uh, very favorable rates for mortgages. So we were able to carry those mortgages and provide that kind of housing. We've paid off our first apartment. The second one we're going to pay off, I think, this year or early next year. So they've been very good investments, but more important, they've provided housing for people at what's now become a very low cost. 
So between 1998 and 2001, we were able to buy three more condos. They're, they're all efficiency apartments. They're all in Northwest Washington. And they're all near public transportation. Then prices went sky high, and we couldn't do that anymore. So we decided we would shift our strategy a little bit, and we would begin to rent apartments. And we have done that uh, up until last year. We've rented six efficiency apartments, which we still have, also in the same general <coughs> neighborhoods. Just this past uh, few months, in fact, just in January, we again were able to buy an apartment. And we purchased our fifth unit. So we've got six uh, rented apartments and five um, apartments that we actually own and pay a mortgage on. Uh, that gives us 11 units. We have 11 residents. We have nine men. George is one of them and two women at this point. All of our residents receive some form of Social Security and are required to pay rent. Usually it's $200 or uh, in some cases it's a little bit more if their income is higher then it's 25% of what their income is. Um, I've talked a lot about the kinds of apartments we have and where they are. Let me tell you a little bit about how we operate. We're an all-volunteer organization. We pay a bookkeeper $200 a month at the most, at the very most, who handles our books and keeps some of our records. Otherwise, it's all done by a board. Uh, Joe and I are the co-presidents, and that really works pretty well. We've had that model for a few years where two people take the overall responsibility. And then people on the board sign up for different committees or portfolios. So they're people who work on grants. They're people who work on the actual housing and getting them furnished and getting the house, the, the units purchased. People who work with liaisons. Everybody who is a resident of Anne Frank House has a liaison from the board, a person who, who communicates with the resident and helps them out if they need something for the apartment or if they've got a particular issue that they want to want to deal with. Um, we've got communications people on our board and everybody's got an assignment and it really does work pretty well. We delegate a lot of the responsibility and everybody knows they have to pitch in because it is an all-volunteer organization. Our budget this year is just under $150,000. That's for 11 people. We house 11 people for that much, uh, for, for that amount of money. Um, Almost all of it goes for housing. A little bit goes to the bookkeeper and to other, you know, fees and uh, forms we have to file, application fees and so on, and to postage and you know just general operating expenses when we uh, send out our annual mailing and so on. But of that 150,000, about 94, 95 percent goes to the actual program, supports the residents and uh, the case management services. We rely on a few other groups um, for support. Community Council for the Homeless at Friendship Place is an organization on Wisconsin Avenue in the district. That's the group that helps us find our residents, screen our residents, and also provides all the, uh, the case management services, the social service support and the medical and the psychiatric support. We meet at Addis Israel Congregation. They provide us with mailing lists. They provide a lot of in-kind support, although we are a separate 501c3. But we do have a very good relationship with Addis Israel. And many of our individual contributors come from Addis Israel, although many also come from the broader Jewish community and the broader community in general. Sometimes our, our uh, support comes from family foundations. And sometimes our support is from grants. We have been very involved with Fannie Mae for many years and get money from the Walkathon and Mini Walks um, and other uh, granting organizations. The grants tend to last three to five years, so we're always looking uh, for new sources of revenue from grants. Um, just to conclude uh, and review a little bit, we've got real challenges. Uh, it's a difficult population sometimes to work with. We can go for long periods of time with no crises and then everything will blow up and it's difficult, but we rely on our social service organization to help us out in those situations. And of course, it's always an issue of raising enough money to be able to support uh, our 11 residents and hopefully within the next year or two, our 12th and 13th residents. Uh, it's also a challenge to be sure that everybody on the board uh, 
continues to do the jobs that they do well and that we get everything taken care of that needs to be taken care of. So very briefly, that's who we are and what we do. Um, and I think uh, George can probably give you a much uh, more personal account of the difference that the Anne Frank House has made in his life. 